Hello, and welcome to AARP's Black Community Book Club. I'm your host, Edna Kane Williams. In honor of Mother's Day, we are here today with award-winning playwright and best-selling author, Pearl Clegg, who has a brand new book called Things I Should Have Told My Daughter, Lies, Lessons, and Love Affair. Welcome to AARP. Thank you so much for having me. So glad you're here. Now, I want to start with you first giving our audience a little snippet of what this book is all about and, and how it's laid out, because it's different from our typical book. It's not a novel. It's not, you know, it's, 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 it's not an advice book, but I think it sort of is. So <laughs> give us well, it, sort it of a It actually headline. came about, um, I was having a conversation with my daughter, mm -hmm. who had had a daughter, so mm -hmm. her baby was about three. Mm -hmm. And I said to my daughter over lunch one day, when she gets to be 16, I'm going to give her all my journals because I think it would be great. She could see this journey that her grandmother has taken, which is kind of symbolic of the journey that many women of my generation took, right, right. Um, and that it would really give her a chance to, to experience this. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, without missing a beat, said, absolutely not. I know. You start to look out with that, not. and I just thought right. that was a hoot. Yeah. And she was so <laughs> adamant about it. I said, well, well why? You know, mm -hmm. you've never even read my journals. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. And she said, um, she doesn't need to know all that. Mm -hmm. And it, it really was, I think, her way of trying to say, this is too personal. Mm -hmm. This is too much information mm -hmm. um, for somebody who's 16 years old. And certainly, you know, she doesn't need to know all that about her grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of hurt by that because I've been keeping these journals. And I thought they were a valuable record. Right. So I didn't argue with her. I said, well, let me just go home and read through them and mm -hmm. see if she's right or if I'm right. Mm -hmm. And as I read through them, I was even more convinced that what I had said was really true, that what I've done in these journals is to actually show a woman in process, right. to really talk about what it was like for me to be 20 and 22 and 25. And it's different to kind of look back and write essays about what you saw then, but if you're talking about it now, it's different. Right. So what I've done is actually taken the journal entries themselves so that it's warts and all. It right. really is the good stuff, the bad that's stuff, the stuff everything. I wish right. I had done differently. Right. But I think that's that's part of the, the reason for doing it, to say to young women, of course your 20s are messy, of course your 30s are messy, but it's okay, life is messy. Right. Keep moving forward, right. keep moving forward, keep struggling to tell the truth, right. and it'll work out fine. Now, you, the book goes to, uh, I believe, the late 80s, or early 1988. 90s, and, and, and there's a lot of information. How many journals did you write? I mean, how, what was your stash? Like, oh. it, it just seemed like there was many, many. Boxes and boxes. boxes. And boxes. I've been keeping journals since I was 11 years old. Really? Sixth grade. Really? So that it you was, just, you know. You were born with that writer spirit? Did your mother do it, or did... You just, no, well, my mother kept diaries, and I know that because I found one once, and I really? read it. I was fascinated because it was such a different mm -hmm. side of my mother. Of course, mm -hmm. in a journal, you're going to talk differently. Mm -hmm. And I put it back very carefully, hoping that I had put it exactly, exactly where, where she it had was, it. Right. And when I snuck back to read it again, she had moved it. So obviously, oh. I wasn't as clever as I thought <laughs> I was. But I always knew I was a writer. I mean, from the time I was like two or three years old, I always wanted to tell stories. And once I learned how to read and write, my older sister taught me how to read and write. Really? And I started writing stories. And little bitty notebooks, you know, the kind you get in the drugstore, yes, that kind of yes, thing. Yes, yes, yes. I always wrote stories. And when I got to be about, I guess, right before adolescence, about 11 years old, I wanted to start keeping diaries so that I'd, I always have done it. Um, Did you do it with the little, I, we look uh, about the same age, and I remember the diaries. That with had the, the little, little key, little key I had some of those. Really? I had some of, um, you know, all kinds of those diaries, some that are very elaborate kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But what I find works best for me is just regular notebooks that you can get at any office supply place. And I always do the covers. I cut out things and make collages really? on the covers. So but now, then do you now, keep journals now? Every single day. Really? I sure do. It's kind of like doing scales if you want to be a, a piano player. Right, you have to. It just keeps you, not right. only it keeps you, in touch with yourself, but it also keeps you in touch with the medium that you've chosen, which is words on paper. Right. I one, one of the things I appreciated your honesty around. There are a couple of passages where you you were a PR person early in life, and it was really clear that it was a bad fit. That you just you know you wanted to smack somebody, you just wanted to storm <laughs> out. A couple of times you did storm out. It was relieving to me at my age, but I bet for younger women, really important to read to to understand. I have a daughter who you're not going to get it right right out the right out the, exactly. the bat, that, that you, you may stand, I have a daughter, she's graduating from graduate school, she thinks this job is going to be just it, and I, I'm afraid to tell her, probably not. Yeah, probably, but you really have journey. to give yeah. yourself permission to change, and permission yes. to grow, yes. and permission to say, wow, I thought this was going to be 
the exact thing I wanted to do to for do. the rest of my life. Right. And it really isn't. Right. And I was, for some of those jobs, I was just trying to make a living so I could write. You, that's, that's true. You always seem to know that yeah. the writing was... That was what I always what was going to do. do. I right. never thought I would be able to make a living at it. So I did a number of other things. I did almost every job you can do that depends on writing. I did speech writing. I did advertising. I did public relations. You did All some of movie those work. Things. I did some which, film right, work. Right, but right, I, right, I right. always knew that what I was working toward was being a writer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. AARP, so, you know, obviously we're an organization of people over 50. Uh, and, and especially now, and I think especially for African Americans, given the recession and unemployment and underemployment, people really are, are faced with changing their lives, sometimes because they want to, sometimes because they have to. What, what lessons from your experiences could you uh, give people in terms of just staying with the journey? Because you really have been at it for years. Well, I think the thing that's been the most important to me is to realize that change happens gradually, but you have to stick with it. Because mm -hmm. if you say, oh, I'm frustrated, I just, I can't figure this out, I can't do this, mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this, mm -hmm. then you cut off the growth, you cut off the journey. Mm -hmm. And you have to continue to push yourself mm -hmm. to get to the truth of who you are, mm -hmm. what you need and what you want. Mm -hmm. And I think that one of the things that going back and looking at my journals really made me understand understand was how much that process is required. You have to do it. I think mm -hmm. that for me, the whole quest is always to get to the truth and to figure out how to tell it to mm -hmm. other people. Mm -hmm. And you can't stop that because it gets difficult. Mm -hmm. It's always difficult. But it gets easier because what you realize is it's always easier to tell the truth than it is to lie. A lie requires another lie and right. then another lie. But the truth only requires the truth. Mm -hmm. And then you can continue to do it. So even as people are having to make changes and wanting to make changes, I think that all of that is part of the same process. Who am I? And what right. do I know to be true? And how can I incorporate that into the life I'm actually living every day? It takes a lot of courage, though. And that really uh, uh, comes through in, in the vignettes that you share. I'm really anxious to read the next. To me, it's like you stopped at a certain place. Is there another book coming? I don't know. I really? had never thought about publishing these journals at all. Oh, so that it to. was it was mm -hmm. kind of like, okay, let me see if I can do this. Mm -hmm. And then let me see how I feel about doing mm -hmm. it. You know, saying you're going to expose your personal well, journals true. is one thing. But then when you see it in print, it's kind of like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have put <laughs> July 2nd, 1979. Maybe I shouldn't have put this or that. So I have no plans to do another. Really? But, um, you but know, overall, I certainly will keep are, them. are you glad that you did it? Are oh, you? I'm, I'm absolutely glad. And mm -hmm. I think the response I've gotten is because it is is what I thought it was, mm -hmm. which is a chance for people to say, this is a journey that we're all on. This mm -hmm. is a journey that we all are a part of. Mm -hmm. So that it's not like I've gotten people coming to me saying, oh, I can't believe you did that. That right. is so scandalous. Right. What I find is that people come to me and say, that's exactly what happened to right. me. Right. That's exactly my experience. Thank you for right. writing that down. And you validated it to some. I don't know that I felt exactly, but it was so evocative of a lot of the, the, the periods that we were mm -hmm. going through, especially for women. And, and, and f you, I think you write from a broad women's perspective and you talk about different authors and people who influence you. I love the passage about Doris Lessing. It's like, how come I didn't know she was here? Yeah. But, but also it resonates really for, for African American women. One of the most important women must be your daughter. What is her What is her opinion now that the book has been? Oh, um, she's published? really happy that I did mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And I'd realized, you know, she was saying, you know, I think you should just burn these up and mm -hmm. and don't do it. Oh my but goodness. I think that the reason that she was saying that was not so much that she didn't want me to do the book, but she's very protective of me. We're very close, mm -hmm. and I think she thought I was opening myself up, up to to criticism and to and to potential, you know, attacks mm -hmm. on me about something. And mm -hmm. she was worried about that. But now that the book is being well received, she's really happy about it. Right. No. And. I I, I, I'm so glad that you shared that, shared this much with us about your life. Thank you so much. Uh, now, now we're at a part of the interview where we just have a little fun. I'm just going to shoot about 10 questions at you just to, for you to answer off the top of your head. We do this with each author, and we just try to have some fun with it. Okay. If, and I think I know the answer to this, but if you weren't doing this, if this weren't your chosen profession, what would you be doing? I'd be teaching. You'd be teaching. Mm -hmm. You'd be te favorite color? Red. Favorite word? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's good. Favorite vacation spot? Mm, Tybee Island, Georgia. Oh, really? Uh, best age to retire? I can't imagine retiring. I'm a writer, mm -hmm. so we do that forever. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't really think about retiring. I think about getting better at what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of writing in books, is your favorite a hardback, a paperback, or the new e-readers? Oh, a hardback. Hard totally back. a hardback, yeah. Most, yeah, yeah. Uh, and a little morbid, but what's the first line of your obituary? 
I can't even imagine. Um, she was a good writer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you are an excellent writer. Thank and we're you. We're so glad. One of my personal favorites, and it's a highlight of my life to have, be sitting here talking with you. Thanks oh, so thank much. Thank you for so us. much. I appreciate you having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think about things I should have told my daughter. Write into the comment sections below. Be sure to watch next time when we'll be discussing Bet on Black, a book in which African American da daughters honor their fathers just in time for Father's Day. And if you haven't seen them yet, check out my interviews with Terry McMillan and Nikki Giovanni. Until next time, thanks so much for joining us.